Hey, what's up? Welcome to uh, this new video. This one is paper 11 of October, November 2012. This is, of course, a level math paper 1. Now, with that being said, let's move on to question number 1. So, in this question, we have the first term of an AP, so we know it's an AP, is 61. So, the first term is A, it is 61. The second term is 57, so the second term is 57. Now, so one thing we can derive right away is that if you have the first term is 61, the second term is 57, and we know it is an AP, so they must have a common difference. So 61 plus G is supposed to be 57, so D will be what? Let's find out. It will be 57 minus 61, that should be minus 4. So we can derive D is minus 4 from this information. Now, the sum of the first n terms is n, okay? Find the value, find the positive value of n. So let's find out. The sum of the first n terms is equal to n. So let's find that. So first thing first, we have, we know the formula for this is what? Half times n, 2 times a, plus d, uh, so n minus 1 is what? n minus 1 we don't know, so n minus 1 times d, d is minus 4. And this is supposed to give you the value of n, according to the question. Now let's simplify. Um, we can divide by n on both sides, so this and this will cancel out. Right? And then we can, uh, this will be 1 here, we can cross multiply. 1 times this and 2 times this. So on one, this side you will have 2 times 6, 1 plus or minus 4 times n minus 1. That will be the value of 2. Now simplify. 2 times 6, 1 is 122. Here we have minus 4n plus 4 have to be 2. Now let's rearrange. Send n over here and all the 2's, all the all the uh, numbers on one side, you will have what? So 4n have to be 122 plus 4 minus 2, that should be 124. n will be 124 divided by 4, that should be 31. Okay, and that is your value of n. And obviously, uh, we have only one value, the value, n is a positive value, so n will be 31. So the main idea behind it is, again, very simple. First thing first, we realize what kind of progression we have, and then we can um, know what formulas we can use for that progression, and you, we use the given information to derive the required values we need to then use that to find the value of n. Let's move on to the next question. A curve is such that dy by dx is given to you by this. Now, the first thing I can do is I can rewrite the equation. So that will be minus 8. We can bring the x up. That should be x power minus 3 minus 1. Now the point 2, 4, it lies on the curve, it is a passing point, it lies on the curve. We have to find the equation of the curve. Now, equation of the curve is simply finding the value of y. So, we understand that y will be equal to integration of dy by dx. Okay, so that will be minus 8, x power minus 3, minus 1 with respect to dx. That will be minus 8 is minus 8, is only a multiple, doesn't change. Then we have to increase the power by 1, that should be minus 2, then divide by the same power. Then here will be minus x plus c for the constant of integration. So now we can simplify. This will cancel out with this. You will have 4. So you will have 4 over x squared minus x plus c. That will be y. Now obviously you have to find the value of c. You have to use the passing point to find the value of c. This is my x, this is the y value. We place back in your equation, you have 4 here, that should be 4 divided by 4 minus 2 plus c. That should be 4 here, and that will be 1 minus 2 plus c. So 4 here, minus 1 plus c, so c will be the value of 5. So from here, finally, we can conclude that y, which is your equation of curve, is 4 over x power 2 minus x plus the value of 5. Okay, and that will be your answer for finding the equation of the curve. Now let's move on to the next question. An oil pipeline under C is leaking oil. Okay. 
a circular patch of oil has formed on the surface of the sea. So here, circular patch. Okay, so a circular patch is a circle has formed on the surface of the sea. So at midday, the radius of the patch is 50 m. So at midday, the value of the radius is equal to 50 meters. So when this is 50, we are having this question. So we are saying that the uh, radius is increasing at the rate of 3 meters per hour. So dr by dt is equal to 3 meters per hour. Now what is the question? The question here is we have to find the rate at which the area of the oil is increasing at midday. At midday is at r equals to 50. Pretty easy. We have to find the rate of increase of the area, dA by dt. So we have to form an equation. So on top here we have dA. At the bottom we have dt, so we write dA, dt. Now they must be connected by something. Right, so the only other option is obviously R. So here we have dr, and here we have dr. So this we know already; it is given to you by three dr by dt. So we have to find this dA by dr at the value of R equal to fifty because that is at midday. So what is a? What is a? What is the area? Area. It is area of a circle, which is pi r square. Now we need to find dA by dr, so we have to differentiate. That will be 2 pi r. Now we have to find this value at r equal to 50, because that is the value at midday. That should be 100 pi. So finally, that will be 100 pi multiplied by 3, and that will give you 300 pi. You can write uh, meters square per hour. If you want to, you can also expand or simplify times this, correct to 3SF, that should be 942 per hour. Up to you, this for exact value, or this, correct to 3SF. And that will be finding the rate of increase of the area of the oil at midday. Now let's move on to the next question. So we have to find the first three terms of this expansion. So pretty easy. The first term will be 6, combination 0. Here we have 2x, and here we have minus x squared, right? 2x and minus x squared. If this is 0, this will be 0 as well. 6 minus 0 is 6. That is my first term. Then 6 choose 1. We have 2x minus x squared. Here will be 1 here. That should be 5. 6, combination 2, that should be 2x minus x squared. This is 2, and that should be 4. Simplify. That should be 1, and that should be what? 2 power 6 should be 64. x power 6, and that should be 1. Plus 6, that should be 32x power 5. That should be minus x squared. And plus 6 choose 2 is 18, or 15, actually. That should be this, and that should be 16. x power 4, and that should be x power 4. OK? Now we have to simplify. That should be 64 x power 6 minus, so here we have 6 times 32, that should be 192 x power 7. And here we have 15 times 16, that should be 240 plus 240 x power 8. So by the laws of indices, if the base are the same, we can add the powers together. So 5 plus 2 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8. That will be the first three terms of this expansion. That is part one of your question. Now part two, hence, means we have to use part one. We have to find the coefficient of x power 8 in this expansion. Now first thing first, if you were to expand this, how would you do that? So pretty easy. We will take 2 first, multiply by the other term. Here we have plus x, multiply by the other term. But now we know that we have to use part 1. This is equal to this, right? This is 64 x power 6, 192 x power 7, plus 240 x power 8. Same thing here, plus x times the same thing. Right. So now we understand that we have to find the coefficient of x power 8. So we only care about the term in x power 8. 
in this expansion. So if you take 2, you have to multiply by which one? By this one, obviously, because you want the term in x power 8. And this one, if you take x, you have to multiply by, by this one, because you want the term in x power 8 from the expansion. That will give you uh, 480 x power 8. That should be minus 192 x power 8. So simplify. 480 minus 192. That should be 288 x power 8. But now again, your answer should be just the coefficient, which is the value in front. So your answer will be 288 as the coefficient of x power 8. Let's move on to the next question. A curve of equation y equal to this and this. Now the first thing I always do is I can see that I can rewrite the equation, so let me just do that. So that is also equal to 2x plus x minus 1 power minus 2. Now we have to verify the curve has a stationary point at this and determine its nature, so pretty easy. So let's find the stationary point. So we know that at the stationary point, what do we know? dy by dx have to be 0. So we can find this first. So dy by dx will be what? That will be 2. Then plus here, multiply by the power. And then we have 2 minus 1. That should be this. Multiply by 1 because here we have d by dx of this will be 1. That will give you 2 minus 2 over x minus 1 power 3. Now we know we have to equate that to 0 at the stationary point. So first thing first, we can uh, send this over here. You will have 2 over x minus 1 power 3 is equal to 2. Now we can divide by 2 on both sides. This will become 1 and 1. Then we can try to uh, cross multiply. You will have 1 here. And you will have x minus 1 power 3. Now. Solving for x, x minus 1 will be 1, obviously, because root of 3 should be, of 1 should be just 1, right? So finally, x will be, will be 2. This is shown as required. You have shown that the stationary point happens when x equal to 2. Now we have to find its nature. So whenever we're dealing with nature, we have to look at the point d2, y by dx2. That is pretty easy. From here, this will become 0, and first we have to multiply by the power, that should be minus 2 times minus 2 should be 6. Then we have to minus 1, that should be minus 4, and then of course times 1, because d by dx of the value inside is just 1. That will be 6 over the value of x minus 1 power 4. Now we have to find this value at x equal to 2. That will be 6 over 1, that should be 6. Now you can write, since d2y by dx2 is more than 0, it is positive 6, we can conclude that the stationary point is what is a minimum point. Because of this, because it is a positive value, it will be a minimum point, but if it was a negative, it will be a maximum point. And that will be finding the nature of the point. Now let's move on to the next question. The diagram shows a sector OAB of a uh, circle center O. Okay, so here we have OAB, and that is my center O, and this is my sector, right? So OA is the radius, OB is also the radius. Now, uh, angle OAB is theta. The point C is on OA, such that BC is at right angle with OA. Good to know. Now the point D is on BC, right here. And the circular arc AD has center C. So here we have a center C, and this is arc. Okay, now part one. Uh, we have to find the value of AC in terms of R and theta. So where's AC? AC will be this one. So how would you find the value of AC? So the first thing I can realize here is that because OB is the radius, we know OA is also the radius, so OA will be R. So for me to find AC, I can first find OC. Then I can, I can take R minus OC. So to find AC, it can be OA minus OC. OA, we know it is the radius. We just have to find the value of OC. So let's find that. Pretty easy. We can use uh, our diagram here. As you can see, we have a right angle triangle. We know uh, this side, this is my H side. 
the hypotenuse, and here we have our a side, so we can use cos. So cos of theta of the angle have to be OC over R. So OC have to be R cos theta. So finally, AC is R minus R cos theta. That is your answer for here. Express AC in terms of R and theta, that should be R minus R cos theta. Now for part two, we have to find the perimeter of the region ABD. When theta is this, and radius is 4, giving your answer as an exact value. So it is also very important to know. Now, we have to observe how would you find the uh, the perimeter of this shape. So let's have a look. So defined by P is equal to, it should be uh, BD plus BA plus DA to find the perimeter of that shape. So let's see one by one, how can we find those lengths. Now, um, we cannot first write down those values. Now R is given to you by 4. Now AC will be what? Let's find out. Now the angle theta here is what? 1 over 3 pi, which is 60 degrees. So AC will be 4 minus 4 times half. That should be 2. So this is 2. This is also 2, okay? Now we can find this length here, the whole thing. Let's see what do we have. We can try that if you want to. Um, so it's pretty easy. So if this is 2, this also will be 2. So we can find the whole thing first. So what is the length of BC? So we can use the right angle triangle. This is 2. This is 4, this will be what? By using the Pythagoras theorem. That should be root of 4 squared is 16, minus 4 should be 8. Okay, so again, 4 squared minus 2 squared, that should be uh, 16 minus 4, yeah, it should be 12, not 8. That's a dumb mistake. Don't do that. That should be 12. See? Always double check using your calculator because sometimes I don't know what happens. So BC here will be the value of this. Now, we need only BD will be root 12 minus 2. Okay, that will be BD. That's the first value. Now BA, BA will be this one, the length of arc, pretty easy. It's the radius, r times theta, radius times pi by 3. So that will be BA is simply 4 pi by 3. And finally, dA is this one. It's also pretty easy. It is the arc length again. It is the radius. It's 2 times the angle is pi by 2. That should be just pi. So let me add everything together. So P is equal to uh, BD is root of 12 minus 2 plus BA, 4 pi over 3, and plus dA, which is just pi. We can combine a few values together here. Let's see what can we do. Uh, this one is 4 over 3 plus 1. That should be 2 1 third pi. Or we can, we can expand. So 2 times 3 is uh, 6 plus 1 is 7. That should be uh, root 2. So root 12 minus 2 plus 7 over 3 pi centimeters. And that will be the exact values of the perimeter of this shape. Again, everything is done step by step. First, we realize to find P, it is this side plus this side and this side. So we can find this side first. So we realize that we know the value here we can replace, right? R is this, this is 2, this will be 2. This is the radius, this also is the radius, that will be 2 as well. We can find the whole thing minus this to get this, right? and then eventually find this and this by using the formula we know, which is arc length is equal to r times the angle. r is the radius, and this is the angle in radians right here and right here, right, of this sector. That will be part two of your question. Now let's move on to the next question. So here we have to solve the equation uh, for the values of theta between 0 and 360. So pretty easy. Uh, first thing we realize is we can change that to sine, right? You will have 2, 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to 3 sine theta. 
The reason why is because here we have sine theta. So sine theta, we cannot really change that. It's going to be just sine theta. But here we know we can actually change that to something in sine theta. So we can change that to match that, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why I chose to change that is because this one, there's nothing much we can do with the other one. That will become 2 minus 2 sine square theta is equal to 3 sine theta. Send everything to one side, you will have 2. This plus 3 minus 2 have to be 0. Now as you can see, this one is a quadratic equation. We can factorize. That will be 2 sine theta sine theta, this is 2 times 1. Now again, that should be plus 4 minus 1 to get plus 3. So plus 4 minus 1. So sine theta can be half and sine theta can be minus 2. Again, this is invalid because sine theta can only be between the value of minus 1 and 1. It cannot be minus 2. Now for this one, because sine is positive, it will be in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. So theta will be sine inverse of half. That should be 30 degrees, but also 150 because it is in the second quadrant. This is the angle directly, and that will be 180 minus the angle. Again, the reason why we can do this directly is because here we have a positive value. So theta will be directly sine inverse of half. That should be 30. And hence, that's in the first quadrant. But also we know that when sine is positive, it will also be in the second quadrant. We have to use this to find the other angle. Now that will be your answer for theta between 0 and 360. Now part 2. Here we have uh, the smallest positive solution of the equation this. Okay, where um, n is a positive integer is 10. State the value of n and hence find the largest solution of this equation in the interval this. So let me write this down. So right now it tells you that if you were to solve this one, 2 cos square and theta equal to 3 sine and theta. So you know that at the end of this, when you uh, if you're going to simplify, you will actually have this in the end. So in the end, if you were to solve this is equivalent to saying if you want to solve this equation in the end, right? For example, for example, here you will have what? Let's say in the end you will have n theta. That will be 30 and 150. For example, right. Now, uh, the question is telling you that the smallest value here, where n is a positive number, the smallest positive solution will be 10. So what is the smallest solution? It is this one. This one is supposed to become 10. So how can you make, so if, if you want to find theta, we have to divide by n. So that will be theta is 30 divided by n. But we know this is supposed to be 10 according to the question. So obviously n will become the value of 3. So state the value of n which is 3, and hence find the largest solution of this equation. So let's find the largest solution. So if you had 3 theta equal to 30 and 150. Now we have to check if we have any other solutions that is possible. Because here we have 3 theta, we can add. Let's add 360. 30 plus 360, that will be 390. 150 plus 360, that should be 510. Let's continue once more to see if that's possible. 390 plus 360, that should be 750. And 510 plus 360, that should be 870. Okay, so let's see what do we have. So finally, the value of theta should be what? This will become 10. So 150 divided by 3, that should be 50. 390 divided by 3, that should be 130. 510 divided by 3, that should be 170. 750 divided by 3, that should be 250. And here we have 870 divided by 3, that should be 290. But let's see if we have anything else possible. 
right? Now, if you want to add 360 to this, let's see what happened. 750 plus 360, that should be 1110. And then we have 870 plus 360, that should be 1230. Let's divide by 3. 1110 divided by 3, that should be 370. And 1230 divided by 3, that should be 410. Again, this is just to check. As you can see, these values will be too much. Right, it will be outside of the domain allowed for the value of theta. So once we realize it is n is 3, by comparison, you can see that. Now, we can check what are the possible solutions for 3 theta. It could be all these possible values. Now, theta will have to be between 0 and 360. This is the smallest value, and this will have to be the largest solution. So we have to find the largest solution. Theta will be the value of 290 for part two of your question. Now let's move on to the next question. The diagram shows the curve y squared equal to 2x minus 1. This is my curve right here, okay? Now, and the straight line 3y equal to 2x minus 1, okay? Uh, the curve and the straight line intersect at this point and at this point. So where a is a constant. So we have to show a is equal to 5, pretty easy. We have to find this point of intersection. So how do you find points of intersection? You have to solve your equation simultaneously. Something we realize here is that here we have 2x minus 1. Here we have 2x minus 1. So we can make 2x minus 1 become subject. So 2x minus 1 is also equal to 3y. So replace here. y squared is equal to 2x minus 1 is equal to 3y. Send y to one side. You will have this. E is 0. Factorize. 0. So y can be 0 and y can be the value of 3. Now what is the corresponding value of x? So replace back in your equation. So here you will have what? Let's see. Uh, let's make x become subject now. So x, 2x will be 3y plus 1. x will be 3y plus 1 divided by 2. Now when y is 0, x will be half. When y is 3, x will be the value of 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 over 2, and that should be 5. So when this is the value of 5, right? So shown as required, right here. Part 1 done. Now for part 2, we have to find the area of the region. So the area of the shaded region. So pretty easy. If you observe, what is that area? It is area under the curve first, so area under this curve. Yeah, if you can see that, that will be the first thing to do. The whole area, area under the curve. And then you want to minus area of this triangle. Right? So let's first find the area of the triangle. It's the easier to find. We know the base here is what? It is 5 minus half. That should be 4.5. Now what is the height? We know at this value of x, x is 5 when y is 3, so the value here should be 3, which means the height is 3. So how would you find the area of triangle? So number 2, that should be half, time base, and time height. Half times 4.5 times 3, that should be 6.75 for the area of this triangle. Now we need to find the area of the whole thing. How would you find that? Pretty easy. How do you find area in the curve? You find this by using integration, obviously. So integration of y respect to dx. The limits is 5 and half. But first, we have to find the value of y. We know that y squared is 2x minus 1. So y will be 2x minus 1 power half, right? So let's solve. Replace back in your main equation, you will have 5, 0 0.5, that should be 2x minus 1 half respect to dx. That should be. So first thing first, we have to increase the power by 1. That should be 3 over 2. Then divide by the same power. Then divide by d by dx of the value inside. That should be just 2. This and this will cancel out. So you will have 2x minus 1, 3 over 2 over the value of 3. And limits will be 5 and 0 0.5.
So let's solve. So first thing first, I can take the value of 3 out because it's just kind of useless here. Let's take it outside. And then let's put in the value of 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 power, 1.5 should be 27. Now 1.5 is simply 3 over 2. Now minus 0 0.5. So 2 times 0 0.5 minus 1 is just 0. So that will be 0. So 1 over 3 times this, that should be 9, you can check. 1 over 3 times 27 should be 9, so area of the whole thing is 9 units square. So that is the whole thing. Now we only care about the area on top, so we have to remove the area of a triangle, which we know already, so area should be 9 minus 6.75, and that will be 2.25, but let's check. Indeed, 2.25, and that should be units square for the area. And that will be part two of your question. So now let's move on to the next question. Now we have the position vectors of A, B from a point O are given to you by A and B. So A is this and B is this. Good to know. Now the position vector of C and D are 3A and 2B. So let's write this down. So here we have OC. It will be uh, 3A. 3 times A will be 6. 2 and 6. Now OD, that will be 2B, that should be 8, 0, 12. Okay, now part 1, we have to find the unit vector in the direction of CD. So let's first find CD. What is CD? CD by definition it is OD minus OC. So OD will be 8, 0, 12. Minus OC will be 6, 2, 6. So 8 minus 6 will be 2, that should be minus 2, that should be 6. Now we have the vector CD, we have to find the magnitude of CD. Pretty easy, that will be square root. Square of those values, that will be have 4 plus 4 plus 36, that should be 44. So finally, the unit vector in direction of CD should be the vector itself divided by its magnitude. Okay, and that should be your answer for part 1. Now for part 2, we have a point E is the midpoint of CD. So we have CD, we have to find the angle EOD. So let's see, for example, let's make a drawing here. So we have CD right here. C and D. We have a midpoint right here, which is the point E. Now, what is the value of C? So, pretty easy. You know, CD is given to you by this, by 2 minus 2, 6. Now, we know E is the midpoint of CD, which is half. Half, and that should be equal to C. Direction of C. That will be what? That should be a 1 minus 1 and 3. So C is this value. Now we are trying to find the angle EOD. As you can see we have EOD. So the two directions we need is pretty easy. From the point O, from the middle point, we have to go this way and this way. So we need this direction and this direction. So we need OE. Pretty easy because we know C by definition is OE minus OC. This is the definition. So we have this on one side, 1 minus 1, 3. OE, we don't know. Minus C, C we know it is given to you by 6, 2, 6. So from here you can find OE pretty easily. That should be 1 minus 1, 3 plus the value of 6, 2, 6. That should be what? 7, 1, and 9. That is the value of OE. Now let's move on. Uh, we know OE, we know OD. We can find the angle in between pretty easily. So that will be the two vectors dot product. So OE dot with OD is equal to the magnitude of OE times the magnitude of OD and then cos of the angle in between will be angle O. So OE is given to you, was found to be 7. 
one nine. OD was found to be eight zero twelve, and the magnitude will be what? Seven square plus one square plus nine square. That should be root of one thirty one. And here we have eight square plus twelve square. That should be two zero eight. That should be cos of angle O. Seven times eight plus zero plus nine times twelve. 12, that should be 164. So 164 divided by these values over here should be cos of the angle O. So finally, the angle O will be cos inverse of that value divided by root of 131 times root of 208. And cos inverse will give you, so here we have degrees. 6.5 degrees. Let's try again. 164 divided by root of 131 times root of 208 and cos inverse of that, that should be 6.5 degrees correct to one decimal place for angles. And that will be your angle O or EOD for part two of your question. Now let's move on to the next question. The function f is defined by f of x equal to this. Okay, x can take any values. Now part one, we have to express f, or f, f of x in this form, in the complete square form. Pretty easy, step by step. Now the first thing we realize here is that the coefficient of x squared is not one, so we have to make this become one. So first we factorize for outside, you will have x squared minus six x, and we can leave this one outside, no big deal. Now this is one, we can proceed to the next step. So four is four outside, that will be x squared minus six x, now we have to add something. Something will be the value over here, which is six divided by two square. Now we have plus 11. Now when you add something, you also have to minus the same value, okay? Now because it was inside of the bracket, we also have to give it the value of four. Now simplify. So here we have four, and this whole thing here will change into what? Here we have x, here we have minus, inside here we have three, and that will be square, okay? Now here we have plus 11 minus, this will become uh, 36 over four, this and this will cancel out, should be minus 36. So four x minus three square, 11 minus 36 should be minus 25. Okay, so that will be part one of your question. Hence, we have to state the vertex of the graph of this. So pretty easy, the vertex will be what? Using the stationary point, the value at the end will be your y value, and we have to equate that to zero, that will be x is equal to three. So the coordinates will be, will be three and minus 25, that is your minimum point. That is part one. Now for part two, the function g is defined by this. Again, it's the same thing. x is less than one. Okay, good to know. Now, we have to find the range of G. Okay, so let's see what is the range of G. So, one thing we know, G of X is the same thing as F of X, which is four X squared minus two X, so minus 24 X plus 11. Now we know the value of X have to be less or equal to one. So if G is one, what is the value? That will be what? Four times one, minus 24 plus 11, that should be minus nine. So it will be that value. So by observation or by using the graph, what is the graph of G? So this is the axis. Again, why do I use graph? Graph helps you to visualize exactly what is the shape of your graph and hence you can use that to kind of find your range or your domain as required. This is my X value, my Y value. Now when x equal to one, let's say x is here, one, the value is minus nine. Let's say minus nine is somewhere over here. Right. Now, um, we can see, because, not see, we can kind of presume that the shape of the graph is what? Because we know it is a minimum curve, the graph will have a shape, something like this. Right. Now, because the graph is only defined for x less than one, so we'll have to keep going this way, the graph should be something like this. Now what is the range? The range is the 
y values as you can see it will be the up and down values so here we have minus 9 so the range will be such that the graph is always going to be more or equal to minus 9 so f is the range is more or equal to minus 9 as you can see the y value will always be more or equal to minus 9 that's the, this, is the, this is the minimum value for the defined domain of that function now you can write, write range in terms of f or you can write y as well as your answer now let's move on to part 3 we have to find an expression for g inverse of x and state the domain of this so pretty easy g inverse of x will be what so we have to let y equal to g of x which is 4x minus 3 square minus 25 as we have seen from part 1 now y plus 25 divided by 4 is equal to x minus 3 square x minus 3 should be plus minus y plus 25 over 4 so finally x will be 3 plus minus y plus this 25 over the value of 4 okay so here obviously what happens uh, let's check now here we have because x is defined for less or equal to 1 we can only take the other value which is g inverse of x can only be 3 minus x plus 25 over 4 only going this way right that will be g of x g inverse of x and hence we have to state the domain of g inverse so to find the domain we have to know something here as we have seen before we use this trick domain of g inverse is the same as the range of g we know the range of g was found to be f is more equal to minus 9 so we use the same thing but instead domain is defined by x so you write x is more equal to minus 9 for the domain of g inverse and that will be part 3 of your question now let's move on to the next question the diagram shows a curve y equal to 6x plus 2 power 1 over 3 this is my curve right here now the point a is given to you by 1 2 okay good to know right here 1 2 which lies on the curve the tangent to the curve at a cuts the y-axis at b and we have the normal to the curve at a the normal to the curve at a right here it cuts the x-axis at c right here okay now part one we have to find the equation of tangent a b and the equation of the normal a c so let's do that so how would you find the equation of tangent a b so we first have to find the gradient of a b tangent to find the gradient of tangent we have to look at dy by dx that will be first multiply by the power then minus one that should be minus two over three multiply by six that should be two six x plus two power minus two over three that should be two over six x plus two power two over three now we have to find dy by dx at the value of x is equal to one what is that value that should be two over six times one plus two is eight eight power two over three that should be four that will be one over two so the gradient of tangent is half and we have a passing point we can find the equation of a b so y minus 2 over x minus 1 this is the x value and the y value y minus 2 is equal to the gradient cross multiply you will have 2y minus 4 have to be x minus 1 so finally from this you will have what 2y is equal to x plus 3 that is my equation of tangent a b part one now i need to find the equation of the normal ac so pretty easy we have to first find the gradient of ac which we know should be minus two because we know the normal and tangent they are perpendicular to each other so hence we can find the gradient of ac pretty easily using the gradient of ab now we have a passing point again one two we can use that so y minus two over x minus 1 should be minus 2 then cross multiply you should have y minus 2 should be minus 2x plus 2 
So y will be minus 2x plus 4. And that is your equation of AC. Great. Now for part 2, we have to find the distance BC. So we have to first find the point B and the point C. Now the point B is the point of intersection of the tangent and the y-axis. So we have to use this one. So here we have 2y equal to x plus 3. And on the y-axis, what do we know? We know the value of x have to be 0. So hence, that will be 2y have to be 3. So y have to be 3 over 2. So the point B is 0, 3 over 2. Now let's move on. To find the point C, as you can see, it is on the x-axis. That should be y equal to minus 2x plus 4. Now on the x-axis, what do we know? The value of y have to be 0. Replace, you will have 2x is 4, and x will be the value of 2. So the point C will be 2, 0. So how, now we have to find the distance BC. We can just use the formula we know. Distance BC will be what? Square root 2 minus 0 squared, that should be 4, plus this minus this square should be 9 over 4. That will be 9 over 4 plus 4. That should be 2 or 2.5 units. That will be the distance BC. Now for point 3, we have to find the coordinates of the point of intersection E. E is the point of intersection here, which is what? Of OA, so of OA and BC. And determine whether point E is a midpoint of OA. So let's see if we can do that. So let's first find, uh, we have the equation of BC. Um, do we have BC already or no yet? Let's check. What is the equation of BC? So we don't know. We only know the equation of AB and AC. So how do you find the equation of BC? It's pretty easy. We have the, we have the points, B and C, we can find the, the gradient. So gradient of BC will be what? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Minus 3 over 2 divided by 2, that should be minus 3 over 4. Now we have a passing point, let's choose the point C, that will be 2, 0. We can find the equation that is x and y. So y minus 0 over x minus 2 have to be minus 3 over 4. We can cross multiply, it should be 4y have to be minus 3x plus 6. That is my equation of BC. Now we have to find the equation of OA. How would you find OA? So pretty easy. The point O is simply OO. We can find the gradient of OA. That should be 2 over 1. And we have a passing point, which is OO. That should be y over x equal to 2 over 1. Hence, y is equal to 2x. That is my equation of OA. So we have to find the point of intersection. So y is equal to, from OA is 2x, replace. That will be 4 times 2x have to be minus 3x plus 6. That should be 8 plus 3x have to be 6. 11x have to be 6. So x have to be the value of 6 over 11. Now what is the value of y? Replace back in your equation. That will be 2 times x. That should be 12 over 11. So the point E is 6 over 11 and 12 over 11. Now what is the last question? We have to find out whether the point uh, E is the midpoint of OA. So clearly it is not because what is the point uh, OA? The point O is 0, 0. The point A is 1, 2. So the midpoint of OA is what? This is should be 1 over 2 and 1 which is clearly not this value, so it is not the midpoint of OA. So the answer is not midpoint of OA. Okay, and that will be the part three of your question.